corpse. I'll go check it out. Right on. I'll meet you at the cathedral and we'll retrace your steps when you first went in. Yeah, uh, look, man, I appreciate the offer, but, um, I got this under control. Sun's gonna come up. You only got a few hours left. It's too dangerous, see? I better go out this long. If you say so.
I often find myself at odds with clergymen, but I encountered one at an orphanage tonight who gave me pause. Despite my consuming most of his young parishioners, the father did not react in anger. He told me there was hope, that if I would repent, eternal paradise could still be mine. I explained that to mortals such as myself, the afterlife is of little value, for one must perish to reach it, and I cannot. Sadly, the father will also be delayed in his journey, for I must confess that I converted him to his religion tonight, and as his new lord, I will demand a longer term of service than was required by his previous employer. I have just returned from a lovely respite at the home of a local governor. He was a man of considerable means, and he offered to deliver ten victims in trade for each day I allowed him and his family to live. I enjoyed his hospitality for nearly a fortnight before he became unable to keep his end of the bargain, his delivery being short by three people. So I am not reasonable. I took his wife and two daughters to make up the difference and allow him another full day of life to enjoy the fruits of his clever bargain. There is nothing I enjoy more than strolling down a crowded street on a warm night. All around me, people rushing and loitering, scheming and loving, bearing their souls and lying through their teeth. I hear the pounding hearts, the coursing veins. I see flushed cheeks and bared necks. The street is my garden, and the fruit is in season. Some ripe and tender, others tough and withered, but all bursting with the red nectar of life that begs to be released. Ah, what joy to exist as a creature of solitary desire and be surrounded by endless supply.